This is the stuff of genius. One man's genius. Which transformed simple clay and stone into something uniquely beautiful. A creation which has come to represent the very essence of civilized living. Yet the man whose name was to become and remain famous as synonymous with the finest in ceramic art, whose creation has graced the tables of the most eminent, distinguished and wealthy for generations, could not have had a more humble or unpromising start to life. In 1739, in a Staffordshire churchyard, the six-year-old Josiah Spode watched his father buried in a pauper's grave. A year later, he was put to work in a pottery and at 16 apprenticed to Thomas Wealdon, the most successful Staffordshire potter of his day. Hired Sire Spode to give him from this time to Martlemas next two and threepence, or two and sixpence, if he deserves it. Unfortunately, History doesn't tell us if he earned that bonus of an extra threepence. But presumably he did. Because Josiah Spode was to go on to prove himself a genius in the history of ceramics, founding an enterprise that thrives to this day, creating some of the finest and most prized examples of English ceramic art in existence. In the early 1760s, Josiah Spode opened his first small pottery in the heart of Stoke, making domestic earthenware, often decorated with simple designs in coloured enamels. It was on this very same site that in the space of 30 short years, Spode was to make two of the most significant breakthroughs in the history of English ceramics the perfection of blue underglaze printing and the formula for fine bone china. These two strokes of genius not only ensured the future fame and prosperity of his own company, but also virtually founded the English tableware industry. Today, this must be one of the most familiar illustrations in the world. And all because Spode succeeded in reproducing it and other designs perfectly on pottery by transfers produced from hand engraved copper plate. This was the achievement that introduced tableware as we know it to the world, replacing wood, pewter and silver. Wherever English speaking people traveled across the great plains of America in covered wagons or to the far flung corners of the empire, this was to be a part of home that travelled with them. Today, spode patterns still faithfully adhere to those original techniques. Using a graving tool, or dot punch, skilled engravers cut the design into the copper plate.
260 years later, transfers are still made and applied in the manner Josiah Spode himself perfected. It remains the only way to create the remarkable sense of space and atmosphere in blue Italian. A design which has been in continuous production since 1816 and remains one of the world's most popular and best loved tableware and ornamental patterns. As an authoritative historian once said, if the Spodes had produced nothing except their blue printed earthenware their reputation would still be assured. But Josiah Spode did a great deal more. He went on to make the single most significant discovery in the history of his industry, fine bone china. Spode was to grace the most eminent tables throughout the world, Emperor Maximilian, the East India Company. The Tsar. The Goldsmiths Company. The Shah of Persia. Charles Dickens. and, of course, the British royal family. Indeed, the discovery of the formula for fine bone china was to transform the tableware industry. With its obvious superiority of quality and strength, other manufacturers had only one option, and, as we all know, that was to follow. When introduced in 1797 by the second Josiah Spode following his father's death, its brilliant whiteness and delicate translucency inspired new standards of artistry, skill and finish. Today, Spode still remains the standard by which all others are judged. In essence, Spode's wares are still made the way they have always been made. Classic shapes that are descended directly from the elegant proportions of Georgian silver. Things men and women have made by hand of the finest white china body, decorated by pure 22 carat gold. There is a commitment to preserve these individual skills and talents, to maintain that excellence. Though the scale has increased somewhat and the processes have been modified, Josiah Spode would still recognize all the essentials involved. He'd probably recognize many of the patterns too, because the Spode tradition is essentially one of total continuity. These pattern books, still in use today, date back to those early years of Spode's ceramic revolution, a priceless source of inspiration. Here too are the bespoke patterns, family crests and motifs of some of history's most illustrious figures. In fact, surprisingly little has changed. Spode still make and decorate to order, a personal service which is still in great demand throughout the world. Something which is entirely unique and exclusive, a treasured family possession, like the Spode legend itself, a piece of living history to be passed on to future generations.